From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Good morning and welcome to Montana This Morning on this Wednesday, June 29th. New this morning, the Secret Service says it plans to refute a story by a former White House aide at yesterday's surprise January 6th hearing. Cassidy Hutchinson says then-President Donald Trump wanted to join the crowd as it stormed the Capitol. She claims he grabbed the steering wheel while his limo driver was taking him away and then lunged angrily at a Secret Service agent. Now the agent and the driver are prepared to testify under oath that it never happened. The Secret Service is also preparing a response. And time to get a check of the weather with Miller on this Wednesday. How's it going? Happy hump day. Doing well. How about you? Doing pretty good. I mean, it's a little bit hot here in the studio. And it is warm in here, already. isn't it? Yeah. Ooh, I'm thinking getting a suntan this morning. Yeah. yeah. The weather outside, though, I mean, has to contribute to that, right? Absolutely. It's pretty warm out there already. Beautiful start yeah. this morning, but you're right, milder than normal. Not going to be as hot as yesterday, but still a couple of degrees above average here in Billings. Let's talk about those highs yesterday. We hit 90, thought we were going to get a little warmer than that, but those clouds came in rather quickly. And so only got up to 90, still well above average. Our overnight low pretty much on target where we should be of 55. Top gust yesterday of 48 with those severe storms that came through. That was the biggest thing that happened. And we're going to show you that here with the main forecast in just a little bit of those wind gusts and some of the areas it affected. A little bit of rain yesterday here in Billings for the month. We're at 2.88 inches for the year, 9.41 inches. So both for the month and the year pacing ahead. So we're we're doing OK. Uh, and may actually see a stray sh shower again here in Billings later on this afternoon. Great shot there of uh, the Yellowstone, uh, courtesy of the Stockman Bank Weather Cam. Sitting at 62 right now. Winds out of the west at about 12 miles an hour. Temperatures this morning mild in the 50s and 60s, uh, 70s and 80s today, so a little cooler. Maybe some areas trying to get into the 90s, but our coolest day comes in tomorrow. I'll explain why, and we'll take a look at the uh, warmth of the Independence Day weekend coming up, too. Oh, yes, the holiday forecast. We don't want to miss Just that. Just around the corner. All right, thanks, All right. Miller. Sure. Rebuilding Montana towns after the flood is far from complete, but it's speeding up thanks to help from our veterans. Team Rubicon is a group of vets from all across the country who respond to help those affected by disaster. They're in Montana now, offering help free of charge. The team is in Livingston right now, clearing homes of debris and drywall, just one of the services this organization is capable of offering. The skills that veterans and first responders have that they gain while being in the military or in fire and police and uh, EMS, et cetera, uh, really works well in the disaster environment and those skills are, are very applicable. Team Rubicon has more than 150,000 members nationwide. The total monetary cost of flood damage in Red Lodge is still being tallied. Organizations specializing in housing, food distribution, legal experts, and more are coming together at the Red Lodge Civic Center offering aid and recording losses. The event is put on by volunteers and provides flood victims a one-stop shop for all the help they need. However, coming up with an estimate for how much a disaster truly costs is nearly impossible. Because when a disaster hits, especially a disaster like a flood that took out the housing for the working class of Red Lodge. There are so many needs there, especially the financial needs and the emotional and spiritual needs. A similar event is being held in Fromberg later today. Brand new photos show significant damage to several campgrounds near Red Lodge. Repairs could cost millions and many will be closed all summer. Q2's Haley Monaco reports. June is a beautiful time of year to camp in Montana, or at least it usually is. But this year, even getting there can be impossible. The East Rosebud has a significant road damage um, throughout the drainage. Mariah Lucian Lonergan is with the U.S. Forest Service, which now expects many popular campgrounds near Red Lodge to be closed the entire summer. Sheridan, Rattine, MK, and Limber Pine are all campgrounds that we anticipate are going to be closed. For the season. As you head down the Stillwater Valley, it's a similar story. Woodbine, Jimmy Joe, and East Rosebud campgrounds will also remain closed for the year. The Stillwater Trail hit, so significant debris depo deposit left. The campgrounds themselves suffered minimal damage, but roads, bridges, and parking lot areas are a mess. Here you can see the extensive damage to the Stillwater parking lot, and not too far away, the hiking bridge to Woodbine Falls now looks like this. The East Rosebud area looks even worse. This is the outhouse at the Jimmy Joe Fishing Access down road from the lake, half full of mud. 
there's just a cliff now where the road used to be. And, and that was kind of the like, oh my gosh, that was the moment where I think think we realized we're like oh god we really are not getting out of here anytime soon. Nicole O'Shea was at East Rosebud when the floods hit and had to be rescued by a Chinook helicopter. Her car is still stuck there and she has no idea when she'll be able to get it. You just think that when something happens your insurance is going to cover it and I have full coverage insurance but um, my claim initially got denied because there's no physical damage to the car and because an adjuster couldn't go see it. Overall flood damage to Forest Service campgrounds, trails, and recreation facilities in Montana is estimated at $20 million. The Forest Service hopes to receive funding for some of that through the Federal Highways Program. Our in initial estimates are about $5.7 is what we're going to submit. While all of the damage is overwhelming, there is at least a little good news headed into the 4th of July weekend. At least a few campgrounds near Red Lodge are set to reopen. The Palisades campground is one that is open, and then the district also anticipates opening Basin Campground later this week. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Former socialite Ghislaine Maxwell will spend 20 years in prison for helping Jeffrey Epstein sexually abuse underage girls. She was handed the sentence yesterday and told victims in court she was sorry for the pain they had experienced. Maxwell's attorney says they'll appeal the decision. The Biden administration says the federal government is sending out more monkeypox vaccines, nearly 300,000 in the coming weeks. Testing will also get easier with commercial labs getting more tests. The initial goal is to stop the spread of the virus in areas that have been most affected. New information is coming to light this morning about what led up to the deaths of dozens of migrants in the back of a truck in San Antonio. The death toll is now 51. CBS's Naomi Ruckham has an update on the investigation. More than 50 lives are lost in what officials believe could be the deadliest human smuggling case in modern U.S. history. Investigators believe the 18-wheeler semi-truck discovered Monday in San Antonio had mechanical problems when it was left on a remote back road in triple-digit heat. Initially, 16 survived and were taken to area hospitals. Five later died, including children. A small memorial now sits at the site where the truck was found. We mourn for those 51 immigrants who came to us to breathe that fresh air, but instead found death in the state of Texas. At a vigil honoring those who died, fellow immigrants asked for a form and shared their own stories of surviving the trip across the border. I came here when I was 14 years old in an 18-wheeler as well, and I passed out from the heat. So this hits. Authorities are now trying to identify the dozens of victims who were from Mexico, Guatemala, and Honduras. That task is painstaking, as many of the migrants carried false documents or none at all. They don't have a choice. They don't have a, a life, and they don't feel safe. They are hungry. So for them, America is not a choice. It's the only option they have. The driver of the truck and two other people were arrested. Two men are facing weapons possession charges. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News. President Biden calls the deaths horrifying and heartbreaking and pledged his administration's efforts to crack down on human smugglers. Montana Republicans are blocking plans by a state legislative committee to look into a new bipartisan gun law recently signed by President Biden. The head of the Children, Families, Health and Human Service Committee wanted to appoint one Democrat and one Republican to go through the provisions of the law. He wanted a head start since the law allows states to take federal funding to make improvements to school safety. All the Democrats on the committee voted to move forward with the plan, but GOP members said no. I don't think that this is appropriate also at this late late date for us to try and cram this in here. I don't like it. If there is something that doesn't stink to high heaven in here, we'll have time to process it before the session in January. We've seen the terrible consequences from years of ignoring these problems in terms of deaths of children. I wanted to do everything we could on an urgent basis to increase uh, safety for Montanans. There are five Democrats and five Republicans on the committee. A split vote means no action is taken. Another tourist is gored by a bison at Yellowstone National Park. 
Less than a week after the Southern Loop reopened, a Colorado man finds himself in the hospital. The 34 year old was walking on the boardwalk near Old Faithful when a bull charged his group, goring him. He sustained an injury to his arm and was transported to an Idaho medical center. The incident remains under investigation. And in Wyoming, a man is injured by a grizzly bear while hiking the high country west of Matitsi. He's receiving treatment at a hospital here in Billings. An investigation is ongoing, but it appears to be a surprise encounter between the hiker and the bear. There are no management action plans for the bear at this time. Homeowners in the Billings Heights wake up to find their mailboxes destroyed, some ripped out of the ground, others blown up. Q2's Casey Conlon looks into the potential crime spree. It was a bad weekend to be a mailbox in the Billings Heights. This is just one that was knocked completely off its foundation found on the other side of the driveway after a vehicle came through this lawn and hit it. The details are sparse on most incidents. If intentional, it is a serious crime. At the very least, it is an unwanted hassle for the owners. The front door on this thing was in the next door neighbor's driveway. Eric Scheidler and his wife didn't hear a thing from their basement bedroom early Monday morning, but their neighbors sure did. Apparently the neighbors heard an explosion about 1.30. Next morning I came outside and noticed the mailbox was all in pieces on my lawn. The explosion was strong enough to send the back of the mailbox onto the other side of his roof. I cut this off, but that is it. Brooke Pace woke up Sunday morning to this mailbox post completely ripped out of the ground in front of his house. You just happened to look out and see it laying sideways on the street. He spent much of the last two days cleaning up the mess. I was working on fixing this one, if not replacing it completely. The last couple of days, have you guys received mail? Um, I put a hold on it while I'm trying to figure this out. It landed on the opposite side of the driveway, so um, yeah, they had to hit it pretty hard. Tamala Dimes incident also happened early Sunday. It's the third time this box has been hit, but this is by far the worst. Do you think this one was intentional at all? He kind of felt like it was because it seems like the tire spun here, like they were aiming for it. I just kind of thought, well, why ours? None of the three filed a police report because they either thought it was an isolated incident or had no leads on a suspect. You guys don't have cameras or anything like no. that? Right? No, of course we've got them, got, a, got them in a box ready to get set up, but not quite yet, so. If a suspect is caught, they could face a huge penalty because it's considered a federal crime. Each act is punishable by up to a $250,000 fine and three years in jail. But Scheidler doesn't have much hope of that. He installed his new box Tuesday, just another chore on the list. It is what it is, you know, home ownership. <laughs> in Billings, Casey Conlon, MTN News.